a little bit about the, I know there's a little glare there, but let's see if I could uh, uh, angle it, yeah. Alright, let's talk a little bit about the reed, okay? The reed is something that I've gotten into um, in other videos, but it's been a little while, so let's talk about it. What is the reed on a hat? What is it for? Where is it? What does it do? And why is cutting it something that you can do to uh, encourage your hat to stretch. Now, if you need your hat to stretch, there is something inside the leather sweat band called a reed, which is kind of like a, a ring of wire, but it's generally very thick fishing line, and it's under pressure. So if it's too tight, you're trying to get this ring of tight wire, you know, over your forehead. It's not a piece of soft, you know, cloth. It's not just that it's reinforced and um, it doesn't really stretch much and if it does it does for a second then it just comes right back so um, you can snip it if you can find it and then you could start stretching your hat um, you could do it you know by hands you could do it over your knee you could you could use a hat jack too but that's the most you know like unattractive way you have to kind of get the wrinkle see what you do is there's a clear stretch mark so when you're using a hat jack, okay, let's say it's this thick, the piece of wood, you put it inside, and the wood should line up with this top line of the band, okay? So that when it starts coming out, you're cranking it open, right? And when the back of the hat starts coming, coming out, you want it to stretch mark to be right on this line. And what that does is it, it um, camouflages it, okay? So it's kind of like it's going out there by the band. You don't see it as much. So if there was, you know, if it was up here or right here, you'd see it a lot, like a stair step. So you line it up with this, okay? Then you hit it with steam in the back of the hat, right in the back, you know, right on the outside. Let it permeate right through the seam, okay? And then when you're cranking it open, what happens is the stretch happens just in the back of the hat where you heated it. So you get this little thing in the back. The front looks perfect, okay? It opens up, bam. But yeah, line it up with this line. So when you do get the stretch mark, if you can't get the stretch mark out, 
Um, at least it's hidden, it's camouflaged in a clever way where most people won't see it as easily. You know? um, sometimes not at all. All right. Now the reed is basically this part. See this line? That part there? That is the reed. The little, the little part that's reflective, this tube. There is, inside there is your reed, okay? It's a reeded sweatband, which means is, okay, here's a piece of leather, that's your sweatband, right? It's stitched in, okay? At the end of the sweatband, you got this other thing right here, see it? That piece? Okay, that's, in there is your reed. So you look for the back, right where the bow is here, okay? Right where the seam is. And right over here, right in the back somewhere, either on the seam, next to the seam, doesn't matter. I try to do it sometimes, you know, in a place where it's not so obvious, like right on the seam, sort of looks like part of the, I don't know, part of this bunch up here. You cut it, what you do is you snip that with a X-Acto knife, a razor blade, or a box cutter, okay? But you're only cutting, see this piece here that's reflecting white, this little tube? Okay, you're cutting it right here crossing it. So what happens is that circle, now the tension is snipped and there's no more tension. So you, you just break it there. What you do is you cut it, okay, you, you make a small cut with a blade and then you get to see inside a little piece of fishing line. You could even move it a little across with your fingernails. And when you see the fishing line and then grab it, poke something in there, a pin or the end of a scissor or something, and get it out just a tiny bit and cut it. Just the piece of fishing line, nothing else. Okay? Then you want to shove the two ends back in the holes. Just kind of back in, back in. I use something pointy to stick it in, like maybe, um, I don't know, a pencil point or a hat pin, uh, the edge of a pointy scissor, anything like that. You could use a wooden skewer, you know, a kitchen skewer toothpick. You just shove the, the ends in there. Just get them in there so they're back hidden. If you want, you can seal this again. You could put a little stitch and just tighten it. Little tack stitch, you know. Uh, it's not hard. You start from underneath. Or you can leave it alone, which is what I usually do. Or you could take a little tiniest drop of glue on the edge of a needle or a pin and just dab it right in the hole you made where you cut. Okay. And then just put some good direct pressure on it, like this. Okay. After a few seconds, take your finger off of it. I'm saying good pressure, squeeze it, right? Take your finger off because you don't want your finger to get glued to it, okay? Start again, put direct pressure on it. Let go again and start again with maybe another finger or something. What you're doing is you're just sealing it. You're just pressing it real hard with the tiniest drop of glue. You could use something like, uh, you know, hot glue gun. That stuff is fine. Um, I've used, uh, you know, like the glue stick. You put it on a needle or something. Uh, you could use really anything works, you know, because it's the tiniest amount. Generally, I don't even do it, you know, just leave it. Usually, it's fine. Um, you just poke those ends in, and that's it. Once you do that, okay, you can start stretching your hat. So if you have a hat that's just a little tight and you keep stretching it and nothing's happening, crack that reed, break it, split it in half, and all of a sudden it will start responding to stretching. Now you can stretch over your knee a little bit. You can stretch a little more carefully than that, obviously. Okay, you grab it with two hands on the leather, pull it over your knee, and just, you know, keep your knee on the floor, actually, but you just pull, and you don't do a jerking motion, you just firm and just increase pressure, okay? And you can do across the chest, just a little. Don't do Superman, but give it a good firm. Think of, like, a firm pull for, like, I don't know, for like a 13 year old or something, as hard as he can do, you know. So it's really firm, but it's not like muscle man mm -hmm. hard, you know, you don't want to break the thing. So you're stretching it a little each day. That's it. Now, um, 
best thing too is also to wear it now that you broke that reed. Mm -hmm. The heat and perspiration from your head, your oils in the body, everything will just kind of um, make the hat stretch to the shape that you need it more. Where before when you di didn't have a reed cut, it'd be more you stretching the leather, but that piece of nylon is not really going anywhere. It stretches a little and just comes right back, you know. So that won't really restrict your stretches anymore. Um, I don't know what to say. If you're going to do any crazy serious stretches, be careful. Things can happen. Um, you know, keep your eye on the bands here. One of the ends here will start to kind of stretch, kind of like in a very intense way like that. You know, when it looks like it's at the breaking point and these are going to snap, just pop, that means you're going to have to sew your band back on or glue it back on, which is a pain. So, crank it open and stretch it as much as you can before that thing goes. It'll take a lot of stretching, so if you're using a hat jack or some kind of stretcher, keep your eye on that. Let it open, let it stretch a little, but stop before it pops, because then you got to sew your band back on and you got to sew it in a different position because it's stretched now, you know, so you got to take the bow off completely, move it, sew it on both sides, and you can glue it, I guess, too. It's slightly lamer, but uh, yeah, you could do it. Um, gluing band is, gluing a band is okay as long as, you know, you do it correctly. Um, some bands come raw, they don't have these edges folded over and hemmed, they're just raw, and you're supposed to fold them over, kind of iron them and pleat them yourself, you know, with steam so that they're hemmed, um, which is very hard to do if you don't have any experience with it. It's easy to do if someone shows you how. Other bands, I don't know, most bands don't come prefab. They come, uh, you know, uh, what do you call it, uh, just a piece of ribbon on a roll. So you generally have to make all this stuff. Um, so, uh, yeah. When you're doing sewing, um, you know, just uh, watch your skills and stuff. That's all I can say. All right. Now, um, the reed should look the same in pretty much all of your hats, whether it's a dress hat, a western hat, or whatever. Here's another hat of mine. You go to the back where the back seam is. It's a seam going this way. There's the seam. Usually there's a bow here. Mine and the bow is gone. Okay, you get the reed. Here's the reed, this part. There's your reed, that little white line here. Follow that arc up, there's your reed, your reed, your reed. Here's the back seam, right, right where they connect. Okay. okay, so the reed is a tube here that ends, and then there's another tube right here, and they're sewn together, all right? Uh, this is a good place to cut it right in the back because you already have a seam there. Cut it, and that way it's sort of sort of looks like it's part of the thing, like what you did is not like, you know, messing the hat up. Just go cut right across that little log or whatever you call this, little tube. Little, you know, but be careful, you know. You could even sort of peel it away. Use an X-Acto blade and saw at it because you don't want to get the felt, okay. Once you got that open a little bit, use something else. Take a, a needle or a pin, something real pointy and grab it inside, find that piece of fishing line, pick it up a little, enough to get a scissor on through it. If you have a really pointy scissor, you could use the scissor itself, get under that piece of string, uh, nylon fishing line, cut it, okay? Take the two ends and stuff it back into the tubes, both sides, and that's it. Um, if you want to seal it, you can, like I said, a little bit of glue and the drop of a pin in the hole, direct pressure, let go. Can switch fingers, don't get glue on your hat with here though. Okay, squeeze it real hard. Um, generally, it's not a problem. If, if you shove those things in real deep, they just don't come out again. Another thing is, what's the reed for? Okay, the reed gives this round shape. See the way your hat always have a round kind of oval shape to it? Okay, no matter what I do to it, it springs back. I want my hat to be triangle. Please be trying it. I want it to be trying it. Nope, the reed says no. It always snaps back. It's like equal amount of tension, you know, in a circle. It's a perfect circle. It gives the hat structure. Um, and 
it almost makes this more like a kind of like a wall. It's like a foundation. Um, gives the hat roundness and just makes everything a little bit more structured. Gives it a, a more authenticity. Where without that, it would look more sort of like a floppy, woodstocky, hippie kind of thing. Um, plenty of hats don't have reeds. Um, travel hats. When you see hats that don't have a leather sweatband, they could have a cloth sweatband that's just got some nice body to it, and that gives it, you know, a little bit of roundness and stuff. Or they could also use um, just a piece of ribbon, no reed at all, and just a ribbon sweatband. There's a machine. It's like an open sewing machine, you know, the tiny little platform where you could stick this on and just sew uh, sweatbands in, like black ribbon. Um, a lot of lady shops use that for their. Um, inside bands. The leather bands are more for guys' hats and western hats and stuff. Where traditional ladies, uh, you know, millinery, they, they have a machine that's just got like black ribbon on it, pretty thin, and um, that's their sweatband machine. They just sew a ribbon in here. No reed, no leather, no nothing. Um, a lot of ladies do like a soft hat anyway. And there are other things that gives it roundness and structure. Sometimes they even have a wire in the brim. They can have a piece of circle wire and then the, the felt kind of rolls back into it, under it, like a, almost like rolling it over a coat hanger. That's how some, some of these breakfast, the Tiffany's, these big lampshade hats are done like that. Some of them not, you know. Um, could just be stiffened and stuff, you know. But, um, yeah, reeded sweatband, so it does give it a certain amount of uh, roundness or an oval quality. Removing it is also fine, too. If you want your hat to be a little bit more softer, stretch more, 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 but you're going to lose a certain amount of structure, and it's going to get softer, softer. Um, you could just take that, grab that fishing line, pull it out. I've done it plenty of times to people. Uh, a lot of times there's wires on the end of brims, and people bring in these hats that are like, the brims are like shaped like, like a you know, clothes hanger that was just bent. And they're like, can you fix my Panama? And the easiest thing to do is, you know, you can't straighten that wire. So you just open up the seam from the welted edge, you cut the stitches, pull that wire out, just get it out totally, throw it on the ground, okay? Put a little glue or some stitches, close up the seam, and start the steaming and shaping that brim again without the wire. It's common. You could do the same thing with a reed, but better to snip it and keep the, you know, it gives you that oval-like, that circular quality, which kind of makes it look more like a real hat and less homemade-y kind of, you know. Rigid sweatbands are just, yeah, give it structure, like a men's hat or a western hat, or really soft things like millinery hats, you know, cloches and soft things. They might not have a read. Travel hats, you know, the travel hats that have no leather, no lining, nothing. They're just meant to fold up. You could do this kind of stuff. They're readless, and they still do okay. But uh, again, you know, um, you'll get more shape with the reed in there if you keep it in. So let's say you have a hat that's a seven and one eighth, and you're like, oh boy, I must be seven and a quarter. This thing is sitting way up here on me. It looks ridiculous. Stretching, stretching, nothing's working. You don't want to take the sweatband out. You just don't want to do that. You know, it's not an option for you. Do what I said. Okay, find the back of the hat. Let's find another hat, okay? All right. Get to the back of the hat. Find the, uh, the seam. There's the reed. Okay. And in this tube, just cut across the tube. But right here at the, uh, at the seam. Cut right there. And make sure you don't nick the felt. Okay? Just a little sawing, but be very careful. Use an X-Acto blade, use a razor blade. Usually the drugstore someplace will have a pack of uh, razor blades you could use, you know, as like uh, cutting tools and stuff. Hardware store or something. And um, make that slice. Or if you have a very good, sharp, fine knife. Oh, look at this. I had some, uh, some padding in here. Let's take that out. All right. Um, cut the reed and your hat will start stretching much easier 
and there will be no uh, issues, you know, what's going to shrink back. Yes, it will, but a lot less, and uh, you'll get more permanent results with your stretch. Best thing to do is to wear it tight for a little bit, okay? Stretch it every day. Do, you know, like the 20 knee stretches and 20 across the stretch. Remember those things, those uh, bull workers or something? Bull workers, right? Remember those? 101 uh, exercises, you could like, you know, push over your chest, or the spring chest pulls, chest pull, hand grips, chest pulls, they had all these exercises, right? So do a chest pull, it's like three springs with two handles, chest pull. So do this, one, two, three, do it like 20 times, okay? Don't jerk it, but just add some pressure, increase it gradually, okay? Come back. Check your burn, get everything cool, make sure you're good. Okay. And a little more. This is only going to work if you snip that reed down over the knee. Okay. Don't jerk it, but just increase pressure kind of more and more. Okay. Don't give it to. Uh, you know, like, yeah, I'm trying to show off and show you what a man I am. Handshake, kind of man strength. No, 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 no. Think about somebody a lot weaker than you, their best strength. So give it a good firm pull, but um, not your, your best. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to destroy the thing. But you do want a good, just a firm stretch. And eventually, you know, um, the thing will sort of remember it. What I also suggest doing is wearing it. Um, wear it uncomfortably for a little bit too, if you can. You know, sweating it and stuff. And, you know, just uh, wear it around the house if you have to. That helps. Pull it down kind of tight, you know, a little deeper. Just wear it a little bit tight. It's okay. That stuff also helps. Um, as your hat just gets a little older, a little softer, it'll keep uh, softening up. Um, if you keep it in a hot room, a radiator type of thing going on, all your radiators are hot, and your walls are hot, and your closet is just right there in the middle, your sweatbands might tighten up, you might even lose some size. So you got to find a cooler place. Um, think about it logistically, you know, like if uh, all of your radiators are here, 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 and here put it down here in one area away from the radiators we'll put it on a different floor you know like the basement heat rises down is always better towards the floor towards the lowest level of the house uh, by the basement stairs or something like that is cool don't worry about them getting cold that's not a big deal but they shouldn't get hot uh, you don't want radiator and steam heat to do a number on the leather shrinks it a little bit every single year so that's bad um, other than that, yeah, cut that reed, you know, just cut it. You're not going to notice a, a big difference in the way it feels or anything. But if you do need the hat to stretch, that's a way to do it. Um, I'm not going to say go buy a hat off the internet that's a size too tight and snip it and, you know, do this. It's not for that. It's for a hat that's like almost fits you or something or you just need a little bit more room out of it. So. And stretching might have been inevitable anyway, but you're speeding up the process. Uh, stretching lengthwise is generally what you need. We all tend to have these gaps on the sides, even when our hats are really, really big, you know? Um, and when our hats are tight, we still have a gap there. So it's kind of like um, we're hitting here like a horseshoe area, not on the sides, and we're hitting on the back too. More like a horseshoe and back and front. So you stretch it lengthwise. Certain people do need the sides a little bit more. More folks um, that have rounder shaped heads would usually be from the Asian parts of the world, so that kind of descent. Um, but not always, you know, it, it just depends on your lineage and stuff. Um, most people's heads are a little bit more oval like that. I'm going to say, um, but uh, I'm not going to say most people, but I'm going to say, you know, like Caucasian people, uh, African, uh, um, 
Spanish dudes, uh, most everybody, uh, except, you know, a lot of Asian um, type of uh, ethnicities have a little bit more of an oval shape. And um, if you need to stretch the sides, you can do it too, you know, stretch the front, 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 give a couple of sides, front, 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 you know what I'm saying? A little bit on the side. You're still going to need mostly the front, but uh, do the sides too. A lot of times if your head is round, okay, and not oval, like most of these hats which are kind of oval, you know, if you're having a problem with, uh, you know, buying American hats, Italian hats, uh, Spanish hats, uh, Australian hats, whatever, and you're an Asian person and your brain is starting to do something like this, you know, or something like that, it's common. Um, there are ways around this. Um, one thing you can do is buy your hat a little bit big, just go up a size, and pad it down to size, okay? Pad it down. Pad it in the back. The other thing to do is you buy soft. Buy a hat that's very soft, keep it on the looser side, not on the tighter side, um, and that's it. When your hats are tight, they tend to not flex and they do a kind of a weird thing in the brim. When the hats are softer, they're more flexible and it's just kind of like they move, you know? And, and the brims might do a tiny bit, but way, way less to the point where you could just, you know, flip it down and you, you're usually pretty cool, you know? It'll do like a real minimal amount of moving. So, um, just another tip, I guess. Alrighty, uh, that's about it. Cut the reed. Your hat will stretch easily. Mm-hmm.